Hello, everybody, and welcome to the PWO Podcast World Order Prediction Show. Uh, as you guys can tell, we've moved this off of our WrestleCast because, really, these deserve a bit more attention than we give them when it comes time, in my opinion. Uh, so the very first PWO Prediction Show, we're talking Impact's Hard to Kill coming up this weekend. And with me tonight, I have Cod Sinclair, greatest ref all time. Also, also the host of great YouTube content such as Referee's Discretion, The Quick Count, uh, also the co-host of The Ref Bump. And also with us tonight, he is the best there is, the best there was, the best there ever will be. It's Jeff Hitman Hall. Hello, hello. And uh, as always, I'm your host, Matt. Also, Jeff's a co-host of the Ref Bump. Also, he never <laughs> says it on air. But. Uh, sorry, I, I am a co-host. I of the Ref Bump. Long. Well, I, I'm just always weird about stealing people's thunder. Uh, I mean, Kai is the hardest, hardest working man in show business wrestling, but yes, also co-host of the Ref Bump. I like to share the love, baby. So uh, yeah, like we like we said, we've moved this off of the Wrestle Talk. We wanted to give it its own place for it. So, uh, guys, if you like what you hear and what you see, you can support us at ko-fi.com slash PWO123. It's as easy as 123. And for the small price of a cup of coffee, you guys can help us put out such great products like Quick Count, Ref Bump, Wrestle Talk, and our prediction show. So, um, guys, you want to get into it? Let's roll. All right. Ready to dig so, deep. First match up on the card is uh, the pre-show Brian Myers versus Josh Alexander and um, I think I speak for everyone when we're saying we're a little bummed that this match is on the pre-show but I'll give it its credit just because I think this match was the one that was the most thrown together Um, and I think for me this comes pretty easy I gotta go with Brian Myers he is the undefeated wrestler in Impact right now that's been the whole gimmick it's the reverse of his WWE uh, so I'm going Brian Myers. I don't think that's changing on the pre-show. That's just my two cents. Taking it now, Cod Sinclair. Agreed. Um, I still don't know what they're going to do with Josh Alexander yet. He's more than a capable worker. Um, if you've seen his uh, videos or his vignettes that he's put together and posted on his Twitter, uh, obviously he looks like a million bucks. Um, so that does give me hope here that he, this might be the start of his big singles push. Um, But agree with you 100%, Matt. Uh, Brian, Brian Myers um, for the win. All right. Jeff Hall. Um, Myers is going over. But I think the the more interesting thing, like Kyle said, is Alexander, Josh Alexander. Like, what's – is he going to the scrap pile? What are they doing with him? How long until – He's doing God knows what. So I'm going to be more in, interested actually to see, to see, I guess, his, where his path goes here, here soon. All right. Next up for the show is intergender tag team match. It is Rosemary and Crazy Steve versus Tennille Dashwood and Caleb with a K. I'll start this one off as well. I am going to go with from my heart says to Neil Dashwood and Caleb with a K because we can slow burn that and we still got to push to Neil Dashwood to face off with Gianna Perrazzo. That's just where I think this is heading. Um, but I really think Decay coming off of their big reunion on Tuesday picks up the win here, especially because I think someone else who teams with Rosemary is not winning later in this show. So uh, I am going to go with Rosemary, Crazy Steve, Decay, Cod Sinclair, you are on the clock. Um, Agree 100%. Um, Decay's rebirth or reunion, however you want to put it, um, I think they'll carry that momentum into into this weekend, especially since Crazy Steve is coming off of a first-round victory at at last weekend's Genesis. Um, He did get the first-round win uh, coming off of that. The decay. Um, it it kind of stinks though because I, um, you know, Tanil is still looking good in the ring. The problem is she's not picking up quality wins, which is kind of bummed out. But um, 
but they but they'll come as soon as this small little feud is over and she can get back into the scene. Um, but yeah, agree hundred percent. It's going to be Decay with the win. On the clock. Everybody's correct here. It's Decay, and it's not even close. I think it'll be about a country mile. Um, Storyline says it. Um, they're on a heat. Well, I wouldn't say they're on a heater, but they're 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 rolling. You know, and like like Cod said, this iteration or this rebirth or this rise to prominence again, they're definitely going over. All right. So up next <laughs> we have the Karate Man versus All Ego oh. Ethan Page. In a kumite for all to watch. So, look, this is a battle for Ethan Page's soul. All right. If the Karate Man wins, Ethan Page is Connecticut bound, or I guess Orlando bound now. I don't know what we've changed the terminology to. Propaganda uh, field bound. So, Go, going I, up to the feds. I have to stick with my heart. <laughs> It's not my head, and typically it's a kumite. You would go with the karate man, but I have to have hope and pray that Ethan Page is going to win and reclaim his spot as the king of the indies. So, Cod, tell me why I'm wrong. <laughs> um, I don't know if you're necessarily wrong. Um, so I think that this has to be a cinematic match. I don't think there's any other way to do this match. Um, um, I am going to say no contest, um, if there is a decision at all. Um, I don't, I, I think you're correct in that Ethan Page, this is his last impact show. Um, and I feel like he is on his way to the E, um, he will be a star there just as he is here. Um, somehow, um, both of them will die. Or, <laughs> so, or something crazy. Okay, uh, the last cinematic match we watched um, Blo- with blood everywhere with it, with, with impact. Uh, well, yeah, um, was with Moose and EC3, I believe. Um, it was it wasn't great. So I'm holding out hope that Ethan Page can carry this thing. Um, however. Um, I, I'm sticking to that. I'm saying no contest. Somehow they both die or Ethan Page is in a padded cell and this is all in his imagination and they just pan out and no more spoken of him. I don't know. Um, but that's right, what get I out think. Of... Oh, go ahead. Sorry, sorry. No, you're good. But I, I just think that's what's going to happen. Hit man Hall on the clock. Um, Kai, get out of my head. Uh, I agree that I, I think the same thing and literally the same thing as Cod. I think there's going to be some type of shenanigans in the sense of this isn't real or this never really was happening or it's going to wake up, like you said, in, in I don't know, like a Russell House bed or, you know, I, I don't know. I just feel like total recall, like something weird Ooh. like that's going to happen. I don't think, or an inception, I don't think there's necessarily going to be a winner. I, I think it's just going to. I don't know. There's going to be some type of wonky finish, not finish, but surprise. None of this is real or, you know, I, I don't know. Jokes on everybody, you know, Kumite is not real. I don't know. No, not yeah. the Kumite <laughs> of all things. That what's the, uh, 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 well, what, what, just one thing before I get out of here. Um, what's, what's the over under we get a John Claude Van Damme, um, you know, something here. Look, if there is not a blind scene of Ethan Page just going, ah, uh, I don't know. As, as much as I don't necessarily like agreeing with Matthew, he is 100% correct. We both need this. Yeah, I was about to say, Jeff, you and I are both in agreements. Yeah. Bloodsport, oh, yeah. Top, top tier movie. Oh, just, you know. Green. Up here, up here where the air is crisp. Cream rises to the top. <laughs> All right, our next match up is an old school rules six man tag match. It is Eric Young, Diener, and Joe Doring 
versus Cousin Jake, Rhino, and Tommy Dreamer. I'm going to go ahead and start this one off again. Mm-hmm. Uh, and guys, you got to go with the new messiah of, of wrestling, and that's Eric Young. Um, everything they're doing with this bit, the vignettes they had for uh, Cody Diener, who's now with Jess Diener, are fantastic. And, and the name change aside, look is great. I think you have to put over the heels in this situation. Hopefully they put Tommy Dreamer through like six tables and no, come on, Matt. You're right. Not, you're right. No, 10 12 tables <laughs> wrapped in barbed wire. Um, and Rhino gores Joe Doring back to the eighties. Um, God. But yeah, this is, this is he'll win all the way. It's Eric Young, Diener, and Joe Doring. Cod Sinclair on the clock. Um, I agree. I think that the heels have to go over. Um, they've been on a massive roll. Um, as far as heel stables, one of the best in the company. Um, that's not saying much, but still. Um, Eric Young, since he's come back to Impact, has been nothing short of spectacular with his character work and his in-ring work. Um, but I agree. Uh, hopefully, and it's not going to be via, via chokeslam because he doesn't take those anymore. Um, so maybe he gets uh, pile, pile driven on a, like a bowling ball or something. Um, but I'm going to go with Eric Young's <laughs> clan for the win. Hitman Hall on the clock. Um. So uh, I'm going to zig while everybody else is zagging. Um, the right choice is Young, Diener, and, and Doring. But I just have a feeling that anytime – when you got Tommy Dreamer involved, Cousin Jake and Rhino, I just have a feeling that they may go to the old school well and these guys may get a, a victory here um, in, a, in, a, in an odd way. Um, I, I don't know what somebody getting stuck under something or or they win because everybody else is handcuffed to something. I just have a feeling that, that they may throw the old dogs. Well, two, you mm-hmm. know, two old dogs here, uh, a bone and they may pick up the win here. And listen, um, I hate to do this, and but I have to re- renounce my Tommy dreamer fandom. Um, Tommy dreamer, the old school Tommy Dreamer, I loved, but he has grown into I, I don't, something that I just can't get behind anymore. And unfortunately, less Tommy Dreamer, the better. But um, I'm, I'm going the opposite way. I, I, I think some tomfoolery is going to happen. Uh, when you said trapped under something, the first thing I thought of was um, halftime heat. Nine, uh, n- uh, 99 oh, with that man. nice cinematic spot of the rock getting trapped under. He's like, no, oh my gosh, no, no. Yeah, I just feel and, it. And this slow thing just, just. Uh, <laughs> yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Uh, yeah, I just think something wild is going to happen. Uh, can, there, he get sta- can he get stapled to the ring mat? Wow. Or, or handcuffed down and can't kick out or so. I don't know. I just, I just think something weird is going to happen. Love it. Well, speaking of, well, uh, staples, blood, all kinds of horrible things. Next matchup is the Barbed Wire Massacre between Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan. Guys, uh, this is a night, if you haven't caught on, where it's going to be pretty heel heavy. And the bad guys are going to go over a lot. And Lord knows, if anyone's winning... Some form of hardcore street fight wrapped in barbed wire. It's the guy who lives on the streets himself, homeless Eddie Edwards. The man who represents Boston to a T, Eddie Edwards, due to some kind of interference from his wife or other means, barbed wire massacre, homeless man wins. So, Cod Sinclair, you're up. Um, so, typically... Uh, TNA and Impact Wrestling have done multiple forms of barbed wire massacre. Um, typically, um, there is no outside interference. Typically, it's just the one on one. But the ones that I've seen, um, it's been, they've all been great in their own way. 
Um, I'm not an Eddie Edwards guy. Um, I think that his that his homeless gimmick is downright awful, and somehow his wife looks even worse. Um, so I hope she doesn't get involved. Um, <laughs> so um, I hope Sammy Callahan takes the barbed wire, wrap wraps it around Eddie Edwards' head, strings him over the top of the barbed wire rope and mm. treats him like Jesus Christ because Sammy Callahan will win this match <laughs> um, come hell or high water. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm recanting. I'm recanting. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? I, I forgot about something. You know who was suspended for like 30 days and it's about time that suspension would come up and we're talking about homeless old men? Ken Shamrock is going to be back. Wasn't he just uh, on yeah. Impact? Huh? Wasn't he just on Impact like a week or well, yeah. Nah, dog. Yeah, yeah, because he was back he... backstage. And then and then he ended Whoa. up jumping. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, because they had um, Alicia Edwards trapped. And Ken Shamrock was back Edwards. there. Alicia Edwards. Jeez. Fuck, fuck her. I'm all in. Not, lit- not literally. Yeah, Shamrock gonna be the be the one here. Hitman Hall, you're on the clock. I'm okay. I'm okay um, I mean, you're asking me to to go behind uh, Dylon over here, who's spitting hot fire. Um, I am also going to take Sammy Callahan because he's the draw. Um, and this 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 version of Eddie Edwards, Wolves Eddie Eddie Edwards Ring of Honor, I can get with this this. Uh-huh. I don't know this um, Mean Street hooligan Eddie Edwards. I'm 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 not a fan of. I just have a feeling that if we're getting pushed to that limit, um, Sammy Callahan should be able to take care of his business. So Sammy Callahan for the win, the draw. All right, next match up. It is for the vacant and crowning the new Impact Knockout Tag Team Champions. It's Havoc and Nevea. Versus Kiara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. I'm going to keep this one pretty simple. This is going to be Havoc and Nevea because they have Tasha Steeles and Kiara Hogan focusing and having other bits and gimmicks to deal with. Follow Ba and Hernandez and someone else will get involved in this match. Most likely AC Baby Romero or Johnny Swinger. Something ridiculous. Havoc and Nevaeh go over. They are your new Impact Knockouts Tag Team Champions. Cod on the oh. court. Well, uh, hold on. Cod, do you want me to let, let me go first? Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead, because I'm clock. really trying to restrain <laughs> yeah. myself. There's um, a trade in the draft. I'm with, uh, I, I'm with Matt. I think uh, Havoc and Nevaeh are the safer bet between the two. And with everything... Um, Matt said, "Just there's going to be some type of dust up run-ins. I, I, I think, I think, well, this may be one of your most overbooked matches. I think of the night, and I think that's coming down the pike. So, Havoc and Avea, Cod, off to you. Um, real quick, do you guys remember who the last um, knockouts tag team champions were? I believe so. Was it not ODB and Eric Young? Correct. Oh, they held them man. for four." <laughs> They held them for 469 days until they were vacated by Brooke Hogan, um, which Ugh. means that the last all-female team to hold these titles was from November wait, 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 wait. 2000. Was it? Hold on. Yvonne What's the Eric date? And no. What's the date? What's the date? Uh, November 2011 to March of 2012. It was the last all-female team oh, to hold the knockouts championships. Is it is it the beautiful people? Beautiful, yeah, beautiful people. Uh, you're half right. Uh, it is Madison Rain and Gail Kim. Oh, Ooh. yeah. Um, I mean, Dreamer yeah. and Raven. <laughs> <laughs> um, but back to the match. Um, I'm gonna pull a Jeff Hall here. Zig, why everybody's zagging? Kier Hogan and Tasha Steeles. 
Um, I just feel like they are more. I feel like they they can do more with the knockouts tag titles than the other two sloths. <laughs> um, I, I I just don't understand it. I don't. I'm not a fan of their in ring work. I agree that there could be some shenanigans that could fold it the other way. Um, but ultimately I feel like them winning clean here could maybe force that storyline down, down the road. Um, but this is what we in PWO would call a piss break match um, where you can stay wait, where you can safely remove yourself from wherever you are watching your, the, the, uh, the pay-per-view, you know, this match is coming on and you are for certain sure. You are not going to miss anything. You get up, you take your piss. Maybe you get a beer or two. You come back and you watch the rest of the show. I do not care about this match at all. There you have strong it. Words from a strong man, Scott Sinclair. True. <laughs> up next, we have the X division title match. It's a triple threat between Chris Bay, Rohit Raju, <laughs> and Manic. And look, this match screams to me Manic retaining. But I think this is Swerve here, and we're putting the strap back on Chris Bay. Um, because a, Chris Bay's a stud. We already saw it in his match with Rich Swan, where he outclassed Rich Swan, their world champion, the entire time. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother issue. Mm-hmm. Uh, but Chris Bay is the guy. He is the poster child. Put it on him. He is gold. Superstar. I love it. Chris Bay winning the exhibition title. Uh, Hitman Hall, we're coming to you. Mm. Uh if they know what's good for him, I'm with you, Matt. They'll put it on Chris Bay. Um, I, over the – over the, uh, well, I don't know. I won't say that. I guess – I don't know. The past two months um, from somebody who kind of saw – well, I mean, I've seen his work before, but watching him here lately, he's been really, really good. He's been damn good. And I think they would be doing this to him, him an injustice to, if if they didn't um, put the strap back on him. So that's that's where I'm going with it. All right, I like it. Cod Sinclair, you're on the clock. Um, this is going to be quick. Chris Bay is the correct call. Um, Manic retaining is probably what's going to happen. TJP is probably one of the more overrated wrestlers in all of Impact. Um, he is okay in ring, but other than that, he is just another guy. Um, I was not a fan of how he won the title. I think everybody and 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 their blind grandmother could call it from a mile away that it was either going to be suicide or freaking manic and then even when they found out nothing nothing was done like this just breaks all kind of continuity laws and errors like it just doesn't make any sense um but uh, i guess i'll pick manic for the win Another thing where the finish could just bog this entire match down. Um, but Chris Bay should be the champion for sure. He he is all that in a bag of chips. And then some. I love Chris mm-hmm. Bay. He's fantastic. Next match up, it is the Impact Knockouts Championship. It is Deanna Perrazzo defending her title against Taya Valkyrie. And uh, y'all... I have a rule here. Well, well, Jeff, Jeff Hall has a rule that I have adapted. Uh, put all, put, you don't put all bet the black folk together. The queen, oh, never mind. You don't bet against the virtuosa. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> is a, she's probably the best women's wrestler on the independent. Well, I don't want to say independent scene, but not signed to a WWE or AEW, and probably even just not signed to WWE. She might be the best women's wrestler not signed there. Um, at least ones who's active, like me, you, Tessa. You, you, um, <laughs> you like her better than Jordan Grace? I okay. 
Yeah, I think so. Okay. I do. I do. I, I think she's just a, that that much smoother and her like in ring work is just that much better. It's not a knock on Jordan Grace. I think Jordan Grace is no. phenomenal as well. But no, no, they're I, I'm not I'm not gonna fight you. They they do they're they're di- they're both different and it's yeah. both fine. They're, they're yeah. just different different wrestlers. And their matches against each other, fantastic. Chef's kiss. I do the chef's kiss too much. I'm noticing that. But uh, I mean, it's Deanna Perazzo. She's she is just head and shoulders above everyone else. We've we all forgot how great she was when she got signed and then sat on the bench for so long. Man. Yep. She should win this match. And I think she will win this match. There's just a part of me that thinks maybe Ty Valkyrie wins. So we have some kind of storyline for Deanna, but I believe that Deanna Perrazzo is going to move towards facing Daniil Dashwood. Uh, so I, I got to go with my girl, the virtuosa Deanna Perrazzo. Cod, you're on the clock. Deanna Perrazzo. No thought. All right. I like it. <laughs> Hitman on the clock. Uh, it's it's Perazzo. Um, there used to be a time um where Ty Bakery, her name had some weight behind it, and and not that she's not any good anymore. She's still a good wrestler. Um, she just doesn't. She's lost that allure. She used to be really good and really she had mystique with her, and now she doesn't. Which doesn't matter, I guess, because just we're we're, we're with what's going on with Perazzo. But it's it's Perazzo. I don't I don't see her losing anytime soon. I think you're right. I think she's on to uh. To, to Dashwood. Mm-hmm. All right. Straight sweep. I like it. I like it. Guys, it's main event time. The match that really is probably the whole reason we're here, honestly, recording this video. It is Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. Uh, I, I don't know whether to call them the Bullet Club or not. It's been hinted uh, please, at. please do not ask Tomatonga. Oh, I've, I've heard, and that's exactly where I was going with this. Tama Tonga <laughs> calling people sellouts for this for twice, selling out twice. Um, but it is Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers, the Elite, the Club, the Biz Cliz, whatever you want to call them, <laughs> the best in the world versus Rich Swan and the Motor City Machine Guns. And uh, I will start this one off if y'all don't mind. Okay. So, you all have watched this show long enough. You don't bet again against Kenny. It's these last two matches are very easy. Uh, Kenny Omega is the reason, you know. I mean, T- Impact has gotten extra airtime and money because AEW has funded it. You know, uh, we're probably putting more focus on this match because of uh, the interactions between Impact and AEW. Not that Impact doesn't deserve some love, they do, they've put out some great work lately, but this is the reason we are watching. And it is obviously to me the Biz Cliz winning this match. I don't care. Hook by crook or what? Rich Swan is eating a one winged angel. Cod, you're on the clock. Um, 100% agree. Um, Rich Swan is a charisma vacuum. <laughs> and it, it, he's, I don't know why. He is just the most boring, uninteresting champion. And he's carrying the title for your company. And we were talking about super cards, you know, during our, dur- during our prediction show for 2021. Um, you and think? a lot of us said, um, you know, that there's probably going to be an AEW super card that involved impact at, at, at some, at some point. So you would look at Kenny Omega versus Rich Swan and Rich Swan isn't in a, he's not even in, you know, freaking a, a league. He is in the B minus league. Uh, he should be in the X division match. Honestly, him and Chris Bay should swap. Um, I, there is no really? point to this match other than put, other than to put Kenny Omega and the good brothers over, um, I guess don't be surprised if maybe we get some, you know, AEW run in here toward towards the end. I, w- I was I was thinking either Mox at the end, um, or even because they've had previous runs in, with with an imp, um, Impact Wrestling, um, Penta and Ray Phoenix. Considering they made the save 
um, on on uh, Wednesday night's Dynamite. Um, something here at the end of the show to keep this going. Um, what that is, I don't know. Um, but I think this is a slam dunk. Um, you could bet your kid's college fund on it. Um, Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers um, for the win. Hitman on the clock. Uh, same. Uh, Omega and the Good Brothers for the win. I think that it just has a possibility of being overbooked, like with run ins and God knows what. But you're going to get all the wonky faces and all the good selling that you want. And it's going to be um, Omega and the Good, the good, the good Brothers. I like it. I'm about it. Boys, excellent, excellent work. So uh, with that, there is your hard to kill prediction show. Uh, guys, how excited are you for the show? Can't wait. <laughs> um, legitimately? Yeah, le- legitimately probably uh, other than the main event, probably two or three matches I'm legitimately, like, interested in watching. Um, in, and that's including the cinematic match between the Karate Man and Ethan Page. But um, it's going to be an average show. Um, they do have a lot to follow up with because I thought Genesis was great. I liked that card from top to bottom. Um, so they have a lot to follow up with. Um, as far as meeting the the bar that that card had set, I I can one hundred percent get on this. I think something that also we haven't accounted for is uh, what is going to be the moose effect on this show. Where does moose end up being a factor if he does at all? I have a hard time thinking. You put paid pay per view on. You have probably your biggest pay per view buy rate since Slammiversary, and you don't have moose on the card. It's interesting to me. I know he just had the the last man standing match or the I quit match, sorry, but I think there's got to be some form of moose tonight uh, on, on this weekend. I think you're right, Matt. Um, like you said, to be hard pressed not to have this guy on on television in some facet. So I'm um, run in, you know, to continue a storyline. I mean, it's got to be a shoe in, right? Maybe he's the one who saves Rich Swan from the one winged angel. He wants he wants Rich at 100% before he beats him. Ooh, that's a good call. Yeah, yeah. Maybe that could be the swerve that we're not seeing. But with that, everyone, excellent work as always. I'm excited to watch the show. We'll come back here and we'll talk to you guys on the WrestleCast about it on Monday. So with that, everyone have a great weekend. Tell us what you think about Hard to Kill in the comments section. Check out our other wonderful videos and please subscribe. Thank you all very much. Have a great weekend.